Ask Reddit by OO Me Too. What dark secret are you hiding from everyone? I witnessed my fee and K's suicide last year. I moved states afterwards and started a new life. My co-workers, clients, and new friends call me the sunshine of whatever room I walk into, but I'm completely dead inside. Even though I choose to fake it, I resent them for not seeing how fucked up I am. Damn. I can't imagine being in your situation. I know you feel fucked up, but I hope you realize you're important too. Deleted. I am so sorry that happened to you. He's a piece of shit. Please get therapy. I have a secret fantasy life, populated with imaginary friends. It started in grade school, and I have continued all my life. I am in my 50s now, and still prefer to be alone in my imaginary world instead of being with family or friends. I can't even tell my psychiatrist because I am afraid he will lock me up or give me drugs to make it all stop. This sounds like maladaptive daydreaming. It's not dangerous or a sign of needing to be locked up. All the best to yap. Last Christmas I leaned my sister and I don't have the same father and are technically half-sisters. My sister's biological father tried to start a relationship with my mom that resulted in a pregnancy and ultimately didn't work out. That biological father is dead now but I didn't probe any further about his identity or how he died in case it was something traumatic for my mom to remember. So she raised my sister as a single mother at my grandma's house in the 80s. Then she met my father and they started dating and it worked out because they got married in the 90s, moved into a new house and a short time after that I was born. She told me never call my sister my half sister and just pretend all of this doesn't matter because she's my sister and I'm keeping it that way, and if anyone asks about the 10 year age gap I just tell them it's a long story. My sister is technically a half sister as well, but the way we grew up she is 100% my sister and neither of us ever uses the word half when referring to the other. When I was 16, I conspired with a heroin addict I met online to help me off myself with heroin and dump my body in a dumpster in exchange for my valuables. I lived in a small town and he was in a bigger city where my school had an upcoming trip. We planned for me to slip away during the trip and meet up with him to do the deed. He chickened out last minute and ghosted me. I don't think he chickened out. He probably never believed the plan was serious. I make up lies about what I do on the weekend, usually I don't do much and I'm very content with that. Others are always asking me what I'm doing and I never had anything to tell them. I make up lies to get out of phone calls, or plans. Saying I'm out of town or with friends. I love just being left alone. I wish there was a way to explain this to people in a way that can be understood. My boyfriend always asks why I don't go out and do X. Y, or Z he just doesn't understand that I really, truly am quite happy content just spending a day on the couch by myself. When I was a teenager, I worked at a novelty tourist shop near me. Being the idiot that I was, I stole a wad of cash from the store. It was $100 in ones. I told nobody, but they knew it was missing. Right about the same time, a co-worker who was always trying to get me fired was telling someone she got about $100 in tips from her other job. They ended up firing her because they didn't trust that it wasn't her. Not super dark but mine is also stealing from my employer. It was a seasonal job and they told people if you came back next season you get a raise. Next season I got a 50 cent per hour raise and mentioned it to a couple other people who had also returned who it turned out didn't get a raise. They went and complained to the boss, who then took my raise back and gave them each 25 cent raises. I argued with the boss for a bit but eventually just decided I'd steal a few bucks per shift to make up the difference. I know where my missing friend is. She ran away two years ago and her family is still looking for her. She texted me after the first year. She's in Los Angeles. Two years ago one of my best friends and I went half seas on a fuck ton of Xanax on the 8th of June we both took Xanax from the batch we split, I woke up, 
he didn't know one knows I had anything to do with the drugs that killed him, and I don't know if I can ever bring myself to tell someone. It's heartbreaking hearing of so many people who were sexually assaulted as children and feeling like they have no option but to hide it, lest it cause irreparable rifts between friends, family, and other close ones. Just want to let all of you affected by this know that if you did go public, you are not the cause of any conflict, no matter how anybody else paints it. You were the victim of one of the most heinous things one human being can do to another. The source of conflict is all down to whoever perpetrated the violence against you, and the shame should not be yours to live with. This is a nice thing to say. I once brought up a past trauma and I had comments telling me I was irresponsible for not speaking up because what if the person who abused me had went on and abused other people because I didn't try to stop them? Fuck this website honestly. My PTSD isn't getting better. I have nightly nightmares of the industrial accident I was in. I see my co-worker ripping his burnt face off every night. I no longer scream in my sleep because of it. I'm no longer terrified as much by it. Even though I know it's not my fault I feel an enormous amount of guilt for what happened to him. Sometimes when I'm not sleeping I'll hear the scream he made in the distance and it'll make my blood feel like ice. Therapy hasn't done much. I want to echo EMDR. I'm a first responder and have seen many co-workers deal with the trauma and horror of the job. Everyone I know who has tried EMDR has told me it's life changing. If it isn't a good fit, please don't stop trying to find something that is. Please continue to advocate for yourself. And know that you are experiencing a normal reaction to an abnormal event. Most people will never experience something that comes close to what you experienced, which can feel horribly isolating. Sending hugs to you. My grandma was in a car accident and broke her ankle so she stayed at my house and my mom we took care of her while she recovered. I was entering puberty at the time and discovered that you could order porn on cable and was like a madman ordering porn the bill that month came out to $500 my mom thought it was my grandma because her novelists were on like channel 50-60 and the porn was 500-600 and fao. I've literally never told anyone to this day. Eater, I am Latina and sex porn for women is still pretty taboo in my culture so that's why I'm so scared to tell anyone. Even if my mom and I are pretty open with each other I'm still embarrassed. However, my grandma passed away in 2019 and I felt compelled to tell my secret. But my mom sees that story as a funny memory she has of my grandma that she likes to look back on and laugh about so I dk if I should lol. Mayo um on grandma's ordering porn again. I was molested on a cruise ship by an employee when I was 8. Happened about 30 years ago. Deleted. Not a huge secret in comparison to some of these answers, but I feel the guilt of it often. After my fee and K passed, I napped all the time for over a year. My aunt was calling me one day and I just denied her call. Went back to napping. It was my aunt calling because my grandma, who was very sick with cancer, wanted to say happy birthday a day before my birthday. Grandma died the next day. I should have picked up the damn phone. She still loved you and just wants you to he happy it's okay to not be okay and sometimes we miss important things for that reason. I have never been happy truly in 99% of times I just adjust with people forcibly and make them happy mostly without thinking mine. My grandpa was stationed in Okinawa, Japan during the Korean War, while in the Marines. He hooked up with a woman there, and she got pregnant. So, I have a Japanese aunt and a few cousins, in Japan, whom I've never met before. Hank? Hank Hill? My wife and I aren't officially married. No one knows. We had a ceremony and everything, reception, the whole nine yards. We just never did the official paperwork. We realize that since she's going back to school, it benefits her financially to go through financial aid as single rather than married. When she finishes up, we're going to head over to town hall and finish the last step. Lots of people do this, at least where I live, big college town. 
Financial aid is a big factor for people. And it definitely is better to be single. Doesn't actually mean you aren't married. Just that you found a way to show you love each other and that you are able to compromise with finances. Congratulations and hope you a long and happy relationship. I never have other plans that I just can't cancel. 4 o'clock, wallow in self-pity. 4.30, stare into the abyss. 5 o'clock, solve world hunger and tell no one. 5.30, jazzercise. 6.30, dinner with me I can't cancel that again. 7 o'clock, wrestle with my self-loathing. I'm booked. Of course, if I bump the loathing to 9, I could still be done in time to lay in my bed, stare at the ceiling and slip slowly into madness. I owe the bank 100k. Hey bud, I think they know. My wife is handicapped and I lied to her that I find it hard to clean cut up mushrooms. She has self esteem issues because I can do things much easily than her. So I lied, and now she feels better. You monster. I think I'm beginning to lose my mind. Lately I've been having trouble remembering things that I've known for years. Sometimes when people talk to me their words just don't make sense to me when everyone else seems to get it. I've become super paranoid. I'm having an extremely hard time concentrating. And I've been finding it more and more difficult to talk to people. I'm kind of scared. Edit. I'm only 26. Never had COVID. Everyone here is throwing out big diagnosis, but you should talk to your doctor. It could be something as minor as thyroid issues. I get really bad brain fog when I'm not medicated or if my levels are wrong. Like to the point where I feel like I've suddenly developed Alzheimer's. Hopefully you get it sorted out soon so you can start feeling better. Most people in my family think that my mother recently died suddenly from complications due to cancer, but she really died from the toxic effects of oxycodone, morphine, fentanyl and methamphetamine. Seems as though she just had herself a secret death party. Deleted. One of my closest co-workers, who is an integral part to our very large corporation killed a man in his late teens and threw the body in a lake. He only got off on a technicality. I work remotely so I don't build a lot of personal relationships with people I work with regularly. I googled his full name. It freaked me out at first. But I've kinda gotten over it. I wonder if anyone else knows. It happened 40 plus years ago. He will retire soon and then I might ask another co-worker about it. I just don't want to stir the pot. Did you know Bernie from accounting is a murderer? My cousin raped me when I was a kid and to this day I haven't told anyone about it. It's been probably around 25 years ago or so which makes me feel like it's not worth addressing after so much time. I absolutely hated it when his mom asked me why I didn't invite him to my wedding. I still don't know how I should have responded to keep that a secret. My mom was molested by her parents cult leader when she was a preteen. In her 30s she went to court and sent him to jail. It's never too late to speak up about being raped. Removed. Tell him now. My wife has cancer, I'd be upset if she dealt with that knowledge without me to lean on. My adopted sister knows her birth mother died in a freak accident. She doesn't know the cause of death was beheading. I worked with a guy that was a first responder to the accident. Deleted. I'm living with my mom right now cause she's going there cancer but to be honest, I can't wait to see her go. It sounds horrible but I'd rather see her go than see her suffer even more. It's not like I would get anything out of her will, it's more like it sucks cause she's always in pain and seeing her like that brings me pain. Edit, thank you everyone for your responses, I've felt so alone on this for a long time. She's still fighting a long battle but it's just getting worse every day. I appreciate the help that everyone has offered. It really helps a lot. Thank you. Visit us at our cancer family support if you ever need to talk. Edit, thank you so much for the awards, truly, 
but please donate towards your local cancer charity instead. I created the sub while my mom was dying of colon cancer and I'm glad it's helping people going through the same thing. Get your colonoscopies. When I was around 9 years old I used my mom's credit card to sign up my shitty alcoholic stepfather for a porn website in hopes of starting a fight and her leaving him. For your information she did leave after another year or so. Current stepdad is a real keeper. Edited to correct a spelling mistake. Holy shit that's really clever. I don't know why. But I always keep thinking that one day I will cut all contact with everyone in my life, disappear from their lives and just keep for myself. I don't know why I think like this, I have some good friends. One of my friends did this in 2015. I still look for him wherever I am, dream that he just shows up. I worry. He's my friend, and I love him, but I'm so mad. We don't know if he's alive or dead, and it is heartbreaking. Ah, if you're reading this, I love you, but fuck you bro. Ever since my daughter took her own life, I have been hiding how much pain I'm really in. My family is beyond dysfunctional so it would create more crap for me to deal with. Although, I did tell my mom to goggle donkey balls yesterday and that made me feel slightly better. My ex-wife, the mother of my three kids, and the first love I ever had committed suicide 2.5 years ago. I've been trying to be strong for my kids, and help them through it. I'm still completely fucked up over it, and haven't had the chance to really mourn yet. It's awful, but my kids need me strong and here for them. I'm leaving the country on a long vacation and everyone knows. What they don't know is I'm not sure I'm planning on coming back. Going to try and live a new life out there and see how it goes. I feel I need a holiday, a very long holiday, as I have told you before. Probably a permanent holiday, I don't expect I shall return in fact, I don't mean to, and I have made all arrangements. I feel all thin, sort of stretched, if you know what I mean, like butter that has been scraped over too much bread. That can't be right. I need a change, or something. Be safe, internet stranger. Everyone in my family is nagging me with the fact that I don't want to date girls anymore and think that I'm strange or gay. But I lost my girlfriend which I assume I could have a good life with her. She committed suicide and I never talk about that with them. I know I can speak with some members of my family but my parents are different. Edit, thank you so much guys for your kindness, but I don't want to discuss that at the moment with someone. It will bring back some memories that will make me more depressed than before. If your family know about your dead girlfriend, and still make fun of you, then they are just a bunch of cunts. It's been 6 months since my little sister killed herself and everything I see and everyone I talk to reminds me of her. I can't seem to finish my day without crying at least for a few minutes at most 4 hours. I feel guilty for living while she is laying under the dirt. I hate every Sunday and 29th of every month. I pretend like I'm okay and laugh like I'm used to it. <sighs> Deleted. Hey, you seriously need to go to the hospital. I tripped and fell on my head about a year ago and had to be rushed to the ER, even though I felt like I was fine. I wasn't. Turned out, I had a bunch of fast acting hematomas that were pressing on my skull. Had to have emergency surgery, was out for 2 days, and spent another 3 days in the hospital. Please, at least go get yourself checked out. Head injuries are absolutely no joke, it's something you really need to be concerned about. I would be perfectly okay with never talking to any of my immediate family again. Ditto that my brother. My uncle owned an old Camaro that collected dust in his garage. When I was around 10 my family and I were in town visiting and I wrote the word fuck in the dust on the hood of the car. I used my thumb so that the letters were fatter than my normal index finger. A few hours later my aunt uncle asked us who did it and I proved it wasn't me by showing how the person who did it had bigger fingers than me. Taking that shit to my grave. 
Edit. This blew up. I'm 33 now and the entire family definitely knows it was me. It's an inside joke now where someone tries to get me to admit to it and I never will. I have to think they knew, but respected the hustle of it. I've been accessory to both my parents' infidelity. At age 5 my mother cheated on my dad while he was deployed and my brother told me what was happening and that I shouldn't tell anyone. My father slept with his secretary two years later, for a few years, and would even bring me on dates with her telling my mother we were going to the movies. He took me to her house and had her roommate watch me while they went out or just hung out in her room. They are still married I don't know if either know the other did the thing or if they still are doing the thing. Edit. To everyone saying maybe they're in an open or poly relationship, sure maybe they are but I doubt it considering their views on most everything. Also if they were in one then they should have explained it to us instead of sneaking around and telling us not to tell the other parents and maybe don't bring your kid on your house dates. So yeah maybe they were but if they were then emo their behavior goes from shitty for involving their kids and their infidelity to shitty that they involved their kids in a lifestyle without explaining it to them and making their kids think that they were cheating on each other. There is a chance they both know and just stay together for the kids. It's like there's a hole inside me and the happiness leaks out of me faster than I can ever hold it. I've felt this way since about 12 years old. Counseling. Medication. Changing everything in my life. None of it has mattered. Every day I wake up and have to decide not today. So, this is also me. I just had a gene sight test done for the MTHFR gene related to psychiatric medications. Guess what? Turns out I am a poor metabolizer of SSRIs, meaning my body doesn't process them because I am deficient in amino acid that helps process those medications. I hope I am summarizing correctly here. Now I am starting an antidepressant that my body does metabolize, and I am taking L-methylfolate daily to help metabolize any medications. It has changed everything for me, along with DBT. Recommend checking both out if you haven't yet. Good luck. I sometimes wonder if a bunch of people in an elevator are gonna stab me all at once. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? Funny, light-hearted story from my childhood. My little brother was in the shower, I could hear him singing. I put a coat on backwards, and a stocking cap pulled over my face, and waited outside the bathroom door. He opened the door, still singing, and answering kinda, and I did the Frankenstein thing. Arms out, moaning up. He screamed and fell backwards knocking the toilet completely over. Water went everywhere, the top of the toilet tank broke, shower curtain ripped down, and him laying on the floor in the middle of all this. I ran back down the hall, coat and hat off and sauntered back casually. By then my mother and father and our sisters were there, and everyone is like, you know, what the hell. I've heard him tell this story as proof of the existence of ghosts. To this day, little fella is now a 52 year old bank manager with two kids, he believes in ghosts. I don't feel a bit bad. Ha 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 poor guy. You changed his philosophy and perception of reality. Pest control technician here. You're paying too much for pest control. Whoever you hire, unless it's a fairly small company, they are ripping you off. Unless you have cockroaches or bed bugs, YouTube it. Times are hard enough right now. Edit. Thanks for the awards guys. I'm getting a lot of pest control questions in my inbox. I doubt I'll have time to answer all of them but our pest control is a great subreddit that will help you identify pests and offer solutions. Nice try bugs living in my house. The professionals are on the way. Cutting off my dad was the best decision I've made. I hope it kills him inside every day to not know how his only child and only grandchild are doing. I tried for years to have a relationship with him since age 10 until 18. From 10 to 13 he would tell me he wished I would have died when I was sick as a kindergartner because I wouldn't have tattled and ruined his marriage to my mom. I tried multiple times but was unsuccessful. I still tried to have a relationship with him for my mom, to help her financially, and would visit him for months. 
he'd keep me locked in a closet for hours at age 14. From 16-18 he thought throwing money around would help me but I was already working by then and it didn't matter. I still have my daily battle where I ask myself if he's right or not but I see my kid and I can't imagine thinking such vile things about them at that age like my dad did about me. I was drinking with my ex in her room when I was 19 years old. She was 23. All of a sudden I started seeing images of my uncle, who died when I was 13, in my grandmother's bathroom. He was motioning me into the shower and telling me to touch his penis. I felt like I was 5 years old, seeing that. Luckily my ex was really great and realized I was having a full on anxiety attack during that moment. I was holding my knees, rocking back and forth, with my eyes closed. She asked me what was happening, and I was able to dictate what I was seeing. I was probably in the best place for this to have happened. I still don't know what that was all about. I don't know if it was real or something my brain made up in a drunken state. It's almost been 10 years since. I wonder if you could even just tell your mom uncle ex always creep me out. I didn't feel safe around him. Did you ever get that feeling from him too? As a way to get a vibe check and validation. I've been an addict my entire adult life. I used to drink all day every day. Before work, at work, and after work. I'd occasionally fall asleep on my lunch break or leaving work and have to make up some illness to friends and fam who were concerned. Today marks 185 days sober. Edit, holy smokes. You guys made my day. I had no idea this would get so much traction. Thank you all so much for all of the kind words, truly. And if you're reading this and currently struggling, don't give up. Better days are ahead. I believe in you. My experience is that remaining sober has become easier as time goes on. I can't vouch for anyone else, however. I imagine some struggle with the urges months or even years after going sober. My grandmother has dementia, she's been dying for years now. The woman she was before is entirely gone. My grandfather is still convinced she is there talks to her, tells us he thinks she's getting better. She's not, and he's deluding himself. She doesn't laugh anymore, or remember anyone's names, and can barely eat. In my eyes she is already dead still alive to everyone else. I wish this husk of her was gone so I could remember her as she actually was, and so that I wouldn't have to watch my grandfather or the rest of my family delude himself. I'm also seeing it now happening to my father-in-law and it's so scary, but it's definitely easier to deny exactly how far gone he really is. Good luck with it. Call me maybe is my morning alarm. This is crazy. Once my mom dies IDK if I'm gonna keep going. I completely understand this standpoint. My mom died suddenly two years ago and she was my rock in this world. But you will make it, you can keep going. It will hurt. A lot, and for a long time. My best advice is to find people to talk to, therapist, counselor, friend, and things to do. And most of all, let it out when you need to scream cry, curse the gods you believe in, whatever it is let it out. I quit drinking two weeks ago today. I haven't told anyone because I don't want to be labeled as a drunk or a recovering addict. I am a hardcore alcoholic. Some people know I'm an alcoholic, but nobody knows that I am actively drinking about three pints of vodka a day. Kinda just hoping my heart stops one night. Dude can relate. I was up to two handles of Bacardi a day. As far as I knew. No one really knew. Was functional as all hell. Numerous jobs. Good dad. Last year, I dug to the root of my problems and issues. I've managed to quit the booze since. The 1st of July, 2021. You can do this if you want to. Fuck need, you have to want it. You fucking matter. Period. Chin up fellow human. I have two children who I love with all my heart. My son is my oldest and he is such a kind soul. A lot of people know that he from a past relationship. 
But my daughter, a lot of people think she is my partner's. But I was assaulted 2 months before meeting my partner. So when people see us together and they do the math of our relationship and her age they laugh and say aww so sweet, only ones who knows is our family. Secret has to go to the grave. I mean, how do you tell your only daughter she is a outcome of rape? My mother told me I was such a result at about 5 years old. Don't know when the right time is to share it, do know first hand when the wrong time is.